A mysterious man enters a bar. Initially, the patrons are unfriendly towards him, but he appears oblivious. He recounts an incident at another bar, where a man in black emptied the place while searching for someone named Butcho. This tale unnerves everyone, including the bartender and his assistant Tavo, who try to extract details about the man's appearance. Basemi claims ignorance, suggesting the man is heading their way. El Mariachi, the man from the story, awakens from a dream about Domino, his love interest from the previous film. He hears a knock at the door and welcomes Basemi inside. It's revealed that Basemi is aiding El in locating Butcho. He informs El that he can gather information about Butcho at the bar he recently visited. Basemi questions El about his intentions once he exacts revenge. El simply replies that it will end. Basemi expresses relief at this. El comments that Basemi never had the courage for such actions. Basemi retorts, saying, Neither did you. El then tidies himself up to resemble a mariachi and strolls into town. Along the way, he encounters a young boy carrying a guitar and teaches him how to relax his fingers while playing. However, the injury to his left hand inflicted by Moko in the first film hinders him from using his left hand fingers. Instead, he instructs the boy to pluck the strings with his right hand. Meanwhile, Butcho seems anxious about the looming threat of the man in black coming for him. He instructs his men to watch out for any unfamiliar faces and purchases a bulletproof limousine. El proceeds to the town's bar, where the patrons eye him suspiciously following Basemi's narrative, despite his appearance bearing little resemblance to the description provided, the biggest Mexican I've ever seen in my life, except for his black attire. They point their guns at him while opening his guitar case to look for the weapons they were informed were hidden inside, only to find a guitar. They release him just as the guitar reveals itself to be a cover, concealing his guns inside the case. They prepare to end his life, but he reveals two hidden P90 semi-automatic pistols from his sleeves and engages in a violent shootout with them. Meanwhile, in a concealed chamber, several other men observe the shootout on a video screen. Tavo executes the drug pickup guy under the suspicion of betrayal. El proceeds to eliminate all the men except the bartender and attempts to interrogate him, seeking information about Butcho's whereabouts. However, the bartender is accidentally shot in the forehead by someone from the concealed room. They both try to shoot each other but run out of ammunition and attempt to use the fallen men's guns, only to find them empty. Eventually, the man locates one and attempts to fire it at El, but El swiftly breaks his neck. El Mariachi then exits the bar, oblivious to the fact that he is being trailed by the bartender's companion and an associate of Butcho named Tavo, who is armed with two semi-automatic pistols, a Desert Eagle and AP-90. While walking, he notices a lovely woman approaching him. Her alarmed expression at the individual trailing him alerts L, and he pushes her aside just in time to be shot in the arm, though he manages to eliminate Tavo. Later, L wakes up in a bookstore to find the woman patching up his arm. She introduces herself as Carolina. Although he suggests going to a hospital, she dissuades him, indicating it wouldn't be wise. He then inquires about their location, and she reveals it's her bookstore, though business isn't thriving. Subsequently, he drifts off to sleep from the pain-relieving medication she administers. After running some errands, Carolina returns to the bookstore. Intrigued by his guitar case, she opens it, expecting to find a guitar, but instead discovers his guns. Elvin seizes her. Recognizing him, she acknowledges, you're that guy you always hear stories about, without showing any signs of fear. He offers her one of his guns as a gift, but she politely refuses. Later, he heads to church, where he encounters Basemi, who advises him to leave while he still can, as that's what he's doing. El follows, engaging in an argument with Basemi, unaware that he's being trailed again, this time by another man dressed in black, Navajas, who has been shadowing El throughout the movie. El then suggests to Basemi that maybe quitting is the right move after all. Basemi agrees, but then Navajas fatally strikes him with his throwing knives. El also gets hit, but survives with only a wound and seeks shelter in an alley. Confidently, Navajas waits at the entrance. Behind him, Butcho's armed men and Butcho's girlfriend arrive in their limo, attempting to interrogate El about his identity. El uses his knives to kill several of them, but is eventually shot and killed. El manages to slip away unnoticed and encounters the young boy from earlier, who wants to show El his real guitar. Despite visibly suffering and bleeding heavily, 
Elle follows the boy. A car pulls up, and the man inside exchanges guitars with the boy. They then drive around the corner and spot Elle. The man tries to draw a gun, but Elle is quicker and demands the other guitar. They comply and drive off. He then smashes it open and finds a packet of cocaine inside. He questions the young boy, who reveals that nearly everyone in town is involved in illegal activities, and many businesses serve as fronts, including Carolina's bookstore. Enraged, Elle heads back to the bookstore. Meanwhile, Bucho's men bring Navaja's lifeless body back to their compound. Bucho contacts his superiors to inquire about the description of the man they sent to find Elle. The description matches Navaja's, but Bucho conceals the fact that his men killed their own agent. He then reprimands his second-in-command for believing that L is merely a myth. Upon returning to the bookstore, L confronts Carolina, upset that she appears to be working for the man he is targeting for revenge and mourning the loss of his friend. She clarifies that she doesn't directly work for Butcho. Items are simply dropped off and picked up from her bookstore, and she receives a yearly payment of $50,000 for this service. She explains that she uses a portion of the money to maintain the bookstore and saves the rest in case she needs to leave, but once she got involved, she couldn't quit. Elle becomes more composed and lies on the counter for her to treat his wounds, but she pushes him off abruptly as Butcho enters the store. Butcho inquires if she has seen any suspicious individuals, but she denies it and assures him she'll inform him if she does. Meanwhile, Elle tries to quietly load his gun behind the counter, but he's unable to do so before Butcho departs. He tries to go after Butcho, but Carolina warns him that it would be too dangerous and advises him to wait. Later, as Elle recuperates from his injuries, Carolina surprises him with a guitar as a gift. They try to play together, but struggle. Eventually, Carolina kisses Elle, and they end up making love in her bedroom. Meanwhile, Butcho orders his men to search the bookstore and kill Elle and Carolina by setting the place on fire if they find them there. The next morning, Elle wakes up to the sound of Carolina singing with her eyes shut, only to notice the outlines of armed men outside through the curtains. He quietly grabs one of his pistols and his sawed-off shotgun, pushing Carolina out of harm's way as he shoots and eliminates the two intruders. They try to flee through the burning bookstore but find their path blocked. Heading to the rooftop, they shoot down several assailants but encounter more below. Carolina leaps while L shoots at the men, then tosses his guitar case to the adjacent building. With enemies closing in behind him, L is compelled to jump backward off the roof while shooting at them. He lands safely and uses a grenade to eliminate the remaining gang members. While concealed on the rooftop, L spots Butcho arriving in his vehicle. He aims a scoped magnum pistol at Butcho's head but hesitates upon seeing his face deciding against pulling the trigger. Carolina questions why he refrained from shooting Butcho, but Elle remains silent as they seek shelter in a hotel. Elle suggests that Carolina escape and use her hidden money to start anew, avoiding the need for him to eliminate Butcho. However, Carolina reveals that the money was lost in the burnt books. Elle then contacts his friends Campa and Quino, who arrive shortly after and accompany him to a desolate area of town, where they encounter Butcho's henchmen, Campa and Quino unveil their special cases, Campa's containing machine guns and Quino's holding a rocket launcher. With Carolina's assistance, they eliminate many of Butcho's men. Unfortunately, Quino falls victim to a gangster on a rooftop, and Campa meets his demise when he exhausts his ammunition. During the chaos, the young boy also gets caught in the midst of the gunfire and suffers severe injuries. After defeating Butcho's right-hand man by hitting him with a vehicle, Elle and Carolina rush the boy to the hospital. The doctors express uncertainty about the boy's chances of survival. Fueled by anger, Elle heads to Butcho's ranch to resolve the dispute. Upon arrival, they find themselves surrounded, but Butcho intervenes and orders his men to stand down. It's then revealed that Elle and Butcho share a fraternal relationship, explaining Elle's previous reluctance to kill him. Despite this bond, Butcho, enraged by Carolina's betrayal, demands that L surrender while he executes her, believing it would balance out for L's prior killings of his men. Overwhelmed by the thought of losing another loved one, L swiftly draws his pistols from his sleeves, mirroring his earlier actions at the bar, and fatally shoots Butcho. Later, L and Carolina are shown at the hospital, where they learn that the boy has survived and is recovering well. Details about how they managed to escape from Butcho's remaining men are left undisclosed. After expressing his gratitude to Carolina, 
Elle leaves the hospital and starts walking through the desert. Carolina drives past him in a Jeep and invites him to join her. Elle discards his guitar case and they drive off together, but they eventually circle back to retrieve the guitar case, just in case, before embarking on their journey into the sunset. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.